Okay, so today's the day. For what, you ask? Well, hmm. There we go. All the work's going to be taking place right over there. Let me get my bucket of water. And I'll explain to you what's going on. Well, oi. All right. So, well, I'll get back to that in a minute. Here's the main pour right here. The area that I formed, which is under the carport, which will eventually be a complete building out here. The roof line is going to continue up, up, and there'll be a big front door right here on the front. This thing's roughly 16 wide and 24 feet deep. So it's 24 from there to there, 16 from there to there. Okay, so you can see it's been sitting for a little bit because the weeds have started to grow up in it. Just haven't had time to do this. There's my makeshift screed right there. Alright, so here shortly, the concrete truck will be here. Some of my friends will be here. The truck will be coming through this gate. Pulling down into here. And backing up to here. And pooping all the concrete out. <laughs> and then if there's any left, that's what I have this form for. For any extra concrete... We're going to put it right into there. Okay, so we'll continue here in a minute. <laughs> Alright, so this is like about four hours later. Here's a little entry to the, to the workshop. A little covered entry. We did a little room finish on that one, just so you'd have better traction. It won't slip on it when it's wet. And the big bad boys right here. Of course, you can see the sun is drying, drying out this part quicker than the part back there. But here you go, if you can make that out. Yes, sir. It'll probably look better once it, it's dry. I can brush off the uh, the little crud around it. So we now have concrete. And then tomorrow evening I can pull all the forms off. Get it all cleaned up. And I don't know if you can really tell in the camera here but it's we did a pretty nice finish on it probably doesn't look good in the camera though <laughs> looks like hammered dog crap but it's not it's actually really smooth really oh look there's the turd Rudy he <laughs> no 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 Get you a close up of it here. For some reason, to me, it looks worse in the camera. It really doesn't look bad. <laughs> the camera just looks, I don't know. You can really see, I see a lot more of the trowel marks and stuff, but it's actually really smooth. It just shows the trowel marks, which is kind of cool. It gives it a nice little texture look to it. And this is thanks to Russell, my friend Russell, and my friend Kevin. Yep. There was, uh, this is unusual too, because there was three white guys doing this concrete, and plus the driver of the concrete truck was white. Uh, amazing yep 
So that's roughly a 16 wide by 24 feet deep. Plenty big enough. And there's Mikasa. And the super green grass in the middle of winter. There's our makeshift screeds. That's what we screeded it with. Worked great. Yeah, as you can see, the lawn, or the, the grass, you could, the weeds grass, you could say, is very, very green and lush. And we are just now in the beginning of March. But it's been like this pretty much all winter long. I've had to mow all winter. Mow and weed eat all winter long. Amazing. And look at the wildlife. Rudy, you want a snack, Rudy? Look, look. Rudy, Rudy, get the squirrel. Okay, never mind, don't do it then. Let's see how close we can get to him while he's eating his nut. Oh, nope, there he goes. And he's a scaredy squirrel. All right. Yeah, the grave digger still sitting there in its dead form. That's all right. Maybe one day. And there's the awesome trailer. And that 351 does run. I just need to get it pulled out of that truck so I can scrap that truck. And there's my awesome utility car hauler. The old jet skis. Of course, my brother knows one of these very well, because it used to be his, and it still runs good. We just don't ever use it. We just haven't gone to the lake in a couple years, and it just sits here. I do keep the battery up on it. Oh, actually, I keep the batteries out of them. They're actually in the shed right now with the charge. About once a year, I crank them up. In fact, I just got through siphoning all the gas out of this one, because this one... This one's not tagged, and it probably never will be, so I probably won't ever be able to take it to the lake again. I'll have to sell it for parts. Part it out. So anyways, I siphoned all the gas out and I'm using it for other things, and I probably need to siphon the oil out of it too, the two-cycle oil. Anyways, if anybody wants it, it's for sale. But not that one. That one just needs to be restored. All the padding needs to be restored. Put a cool paint job on it. And that'll be an awesome collector's jet ski. And of course, my lawnmower that actually mows. With a trailer antler on the back, or trailer pulling antler. <laughs> oh, almost forgot. This is where I'm going to park the lawnmower, and this is what was left over. So I had the guy dump it right here, and we flattened it out and made a nice little concrete pad for the lawnmower, which is right there. And I ramped the front side. So it's got a slight little bevel to it, or a rounded off edge. So I can drive the tractor right up on it and park it. Sweet! Oh, the inside of the redneck shed. Not too many, not too many people have seen this, probably. It's probably hard to see it, though. I don't know. Anyway, I just keep various stuff in here that I don't have room for anywhere else until I get my workshop built. Yes, sir. Just a bunch of stuff. Oh, and there's the maybe one day racing mower. I'll make a little racing mower out of it. I'll make it go about 50 miles an hour, anywhere between 40 and 50, if we put the right pulleys on it. You know, gear it just right. 
You need to put some high speed bearings in those wheels though. <laughs> That's for sure. They just burn those little spindles up that stick out there. Just straight burn those up. Alright. That's enough of me rambling on. Until next time, peace.